بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم اللہ رب ضبن علماء صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم آمین الحمد للہ رب العالمین ان دس لیکچر آئی ول ڈسکس دی امپارٹنٹ کانسیپٹس آف ہاریزونٹل فورسز ود ایگزامپلس اینڈ فار دس آئی ایم یوزنگ دی ورک آف این آؤٹ اسٹینڈنگ اینڈ ون آف مائی بیسٹ اسٹوڈنٹ مس شارقہ بتول آف کلاس ٹوینٹی ٹوینٹی دی لائسیم An important advice, be soft and be gentle. Horizontal and vertical forces. Forces acting horizontally have no vertical components. That is sigma y is zero, like in this example. These two forces have no vertical components. Therefore, the resultant of these two forces is nine newtons towards right. Similarly, forces acting vertically have no horizontal components. That is sigma x zero. These two forces have no horizontal component. Therefore, sigma x of these two forces is zero, and the resultant of these two forces is fourteen newtons in upward direction. Horizontal forces. An important note: don't consider the vertical forces, that is, normal reaction and weight, while resolving horizontal forces. That is, ignore the vertical forces R and W. You need to ignore these two forces. while resolving horizontal forces example 1 a small block of mass 1.25 kg is on a horizontal surface three horizontal forces this is the concept of this lecture and horizontal forces means we will ignore the normal reaction and weight of this block with magnitudes and directions as shown in the diagram are applied to the block cos theta is 0.28 and sin theta is 0.96 a horizontal force frictional force also acts on the block and the block is in equilibrium this is the force diagram of this situation this five has two components five sin theta five cos theta and we will ignore the normal reaction and weight while resolving these forces because we are resolving horizontal forces therefore friction is equal to 5 cos theta plus 6.1 newtons hence friction is 7.5 towards right and part 2 given that the block is in in limiting equilibrium limiting equilibrium means the block is about to move and limiting equilibrium also means friction is mu r the force of magnet uh, sorry part 2 given that the block is in lim in limiting equilibrium find the coefficient of friction between the block and the surface with the help of this formula we can get the uh, coefficient of friction r is the weight which is 12.5 and friction is 7.5 therefore mu is 0.60 next part the force of magnitude 6.1 newton is now replaced by a force of magnitude 8.6 you need to replace this by 8.6 in the force diagram acting in the same direction and the block begins to move find the magnitude and direction of the acceleration of the block so first we need to find sigma x sigma x since we are taking this direction positive so friction minus 5 cos theta minus 8.6 will give you sigma x since r is unchanged and mu is unchanged therefore friction is also unchanged it's 7.5 Sigma x is minus two point five. Minus two point five means towards left. Sigma y, four point eight minus five sine theta, which is zero. Therefore, resultant is sigma x. And the formula of resultant is M A. Since f is negative, minus two point five, and mass is one point two five, so acceleration is minus two. Minus two means towards left. So acceleration is two meter per second square in the direction of negative x-axis. Next example: A particle p of mass point five kg lies on a smooth horizontal plane. Horizontal forces of magnitudes f newtons, two point five newtons, and two point six newtons act on p. The directions of the forces are shown in the diagram: alpha, beta, theta. Where tan alpha is this and tan beta is this, you need to utilize tan alpha and tan beta uh, properly to get the values of cos alpha, sin alpha, cos beta, and sin beta. You need to draw triangles with the help of these values of tan alpha and tan beta. 
part one given that p is in equilibrium find the values of f and tan theta this is the force diagram of this situation this 2.5 has two components 2.5 sine beta 2.5 cos beta similarly f has two components and 2.6 has two components since the block is since the particle is in equilibrium therefore all right is equal to all left so this plus this is equal to f cos theta this is equation number one and this plus this is equal to 2.6 sin alpha which is here since f is this so by substituting f here we can get the value of tan theta and with the help of tan theta we can get the values of sin theta and cos theta by substituting cos theta here we can get f so you have option you can either find uh, theta or find sin theta and cos theta part two the force of ma magnitude f newton is removed this force has removed now find the magnitude and direction of the acceleration with which p starts to move so you need to consider this force diagram only you just need to ignore this therefore we first need to work sigma x sigma x will be this plus this so sigma y will be this minus this so sigma x is this sigma y is this resultant is 3.80 this is the formula of resultant acceleration is 7.60 now make the rough sketch with respect to sigma x and sigma y and get the value of this angle so ta theta tan inverse sigma y upon sigma x so minus 26.6 which means the acceleration as uh, is acting uh, acceleration makes 26.6 degrees from positive x axis in this direction this is the direction of acceleration this is the direction of resultant and the direction of acceleration 26.6 degrees from positive x-axis in clockwise direction. Next question. A small bead Q can move freely along a smooth horizontal straight wire AB of length 3 meter. This is 3 meter. Three horizontal forces. Again, we have horizontal forces. F, R, sorry, F, 10 and 20 act on the bead in the directions shown in the diagram the magnitude of the resultant of the three forces is r newton this is the uh, uh, magnitude of the resultant of these three forces in this direction number one find the values of f and r we already have discussed in the uh, first lecture of resolving of forces whenever resultant is given we resolve resultant separately and forces separately this is the force diagram of these three forces this f has two components this tan has two components and this is the force diagram of this resultant you just need to ignore uh, equate sigma x of both and sigma y of both sigma f x of these of this will be 20 plus f cos 70 minus 10 cos 30 this is sigma x and this must be r cos 15 because sigma x of this is r cos 15 so this is the equation for r in terms of f now equate sigma y so f sine 70 minus 10 sine 30 is equal to minus r sine 15 make sure you write minus here so r is here this is negative because we substituted the value of r so by solving this equation we can get the value of f hence f is 1.90 by substituting f here we can get the value of r so it's important to make these two equations correctly this one and this one second part initially the bead is at rest at a so u is 0 s is 3 the distance is 3 and it reaches b with the speed this this is v find the mass of the bead so we first find a so with the help of this equation of motion we can get the value of a we have v we have u0 we have s3 now this is the uh, equation of the resultant force resultant force is r cos 15 and mass and acceleration so mass is 0 0.5 to 5 
because bead is moving along the wire. So you need to take sigma x of x of the resultant. Sigma x, the x component of resultant because bead is moving along the rod, along the wire. Next question, four horizontal forces act, on, at, a, uh, act at a point O are in equilibrium. The magnitudes of the forces are F Newtons, G Newtons, 15 Newtons and F Newtons. And the forces act in the direction as shown in the diagram. Show that F is 41.0. First, draw the force diagram. This F has two components. This F has two components. 15 is as it is. G is as it is. Since the uh, forces are in equilibrium, so this is equal to F cos 60 plus 15. So F is 41.0. For G, you need to uh, equate these forces. This plus this equals to G. By substituting the value of F here and here, we can get the value of G. Last question of this lecture. Three horizontal forces of magnitudes 150, 100 and P have directions as shown in the diagram. The resultant of these three forces is shown by the broken line. The resultant has magnitude 120. This force has magnitude 120, makes 75 degrees with the 150 newtons. This is 75. Find the values of P and theta. This question is repeated. We will make separate diagrams for these three forces and this resultant. So this is the force diagram of this resultant and this is the force diagram of these three forces. We just need to compare sigma x with sigma x and sigma y of sigma y of these two. So sigma x, so minus 120 cos 75 is equal to P cos theta minus 150 plus 100 because we are taking this as positive direction. So 120 sin 75 is equal to p sine theta by solving these two equations we can get the values of theta and p this is all i hope this lecture will help you to understand the concepts of horizontal forces uh, i am extremely thankful to miss sharika batul who helped me to make this lecture indeed she is an outstanding student may allah Paak bless her always ameen may allah Paak give her the best grades in all her exams ameen allah hafiz